Hello, YouTube. I recently have started a project with one of these ESP32s, and they have been a lot of fun for me to work with. Uh, and I had one project where I wanted to display some text onto a, onto a little display unit. So I bought one of these very, very inexpensive, cost me $13 from this website, from Amazon. Uh, and it's a simple little um, 128 by 160 TFT display, which uses a serial connection to communicate with it. The ESP32 has two serial connections. Um, if you've never used one of these ESP32s, I also got a five pack of them on Amazon for $25. So uh, you can get one for you know five bucks a shot. They've got Bluetooth and they've got Wi-Fi and a lot of features that are a little bit extra than just an ordinary Arduino. And so I'm starting to learn how to do some things with this ESP32, and I've enjoyed working with it. But it was hard, a little bit of a pain to get connected to this super cheap uh, $13 TFT display. So maybe that my work, I can share it and might help somebody out there. So mine uh, ESP32 is a 30 pin. Uh, there are different ones, 32s and 36s, but this is the only one I've had. There's two built-in SPI kind of uh, uh, pin sets for it and getting it connected up to the correct pins on the TFT was took a little digging around. So this is how I did it. Um, when you look at the TFT device, you can do colors, you can do um, text, you can do different shapes, squares, rectangles, triangles, circles. So you can do a lot with it and um, it's very useful in certain applications. The pin labels on this are uh, the, the ones that you need to worry about are these, this is for the data, these are the communication pins here. The other pins, power and LED, control the brightness. So the labeling on these might be considered a little non-standard for certain types of SPI devices. I don't work with those a lot, so that was a little bit of a challenge to get it. But the pin connections um, are here on my uh, sketch. So the TFT uh, is doesn't call it DC, that's often uh, referred to as a data command. And so on the TFT, it's uh, A, A0 or A0, I don't know. Um, and then the MOSI is the SDA on the TFT, and then the clock is pretty easy to figure out, and reset is pretty easy. And then case select, that was labeled the same. So these were the SPI pins for the ESP32. Um, ignore this comment here. Um, I, I tried pin 25. I thought this was something other than um, I was just making stuff up for what it was, and it's not. So it's, it's, a, it's a data pin. It has to be the pin 32. Um, I do use... So that's the connection on it. Now, in order to you, you create an object using these libraries, so import the libraries, they're easy to find. I think the library manager will get you them directly. And then powering the TFT are those other pins. So the uh, ground is easy, okay, hook up ground. And now the LED pin controls the brightness. So this pin right here, you can do a couple different things with it. Um, the ESP32 has, it has both 5 volts and it has, um, so, sorry about that. So the ESP32, you can, it, it, it will provide either 5 volts or it will provide 3.3 .3 volts. And depending upon how you use it, you can do it. You can also do, uh, a direct analog 
uh, output, and that goes 0 to 3.3 volts. And so if you use that, and for that, you can either use pin 25 or pin 26 on the ESP32. So I'm using pin 25. So I use that for my brightness control. It goes into the LED. And then the voltage can either be one of these other ones, 5 volts or 3.3. And I didn't notice any difference. And the digital to analog converter, that's, that's not a PWM. That's a true analog 0 to 3.3 volts. Uh, but it goes from 0 to 255. And as you go from 0 to 255, a lot of that doesn't do anything. But when it got, the working range was about 200 to, I would say, about 230. So when you get into that range, that will handle your brightness in that range going into this LED pin here. So <clears throat> it's a DAC right, and I'll show you that code. If you want to, you can leave the VCC off if you absolutely need to. I thought, found it to be a little glitchy when I didn't have the VCC connected if I was only controlling it with the LED brightness pin. Uh, so I put 5 volts in here or 3.3 volts in here. It didn't seem to matter. If you put 3.3 volts in here and then put 5 volts directly into the LED, then it was a little bit brighter. Uh, don't know if that harms it or will reduce the operating time, the lifespan of it, but it did get a little bit brighter, but it's perfectly fine without doing that. So either you have a couple of choices for this, and then this can be brightness, or you can just wire it directly, either way. Uh, again, those were the graphic, those were some of the libraries that were needed, and uh, they were easy to find. When you, if you want to do the brightness, uh, I have a little example here at the start of the void loop where I just print the text of the brightness on it. And so I set the text color and the size. So I, so I made the screen filled with red and then I did the brightness in a blue color. So I filled the screen with red and then I just displayed the actual value of this counting integer as I went from 150 to 255. And it's a printing, TFT print prints the text of the I value. And so that is the, this is the command right here that, that connects pin 25 uh, to the LED and that connect, that controlled the brightness. So um, I should have commented that here. Um, so that will get it working for you, I hope. Uh, it, there, there's, there's lots of options for the TFT uh, little display, some of the, the library that's built in. Um, there's colors that you can give it by name, or you can give the colors by, the, by a hex number for color. Uh, the colored names, there's the basic names that uh, we all know and love, the primary colors, red, green, blue, and cyan, magenta, and yellow. But then it also included orange for the color. Or you could, if you wanted to, um, put in the actual color uh, by a hex number here. So I did a color for that. So uh, fill screen is a pretty basic. Uh, when, when, you, um, when you look at your screen, if you've not used one of these before, the 00, zero is the top left coordinate. And then I was actually a little surprised because it says it's 128 by 160. So I was expecting this to go to 127 and 159. But that bottom corner is, as far as I thought, I mean, I was surprised and it doesn't seem right, but it actually went down to 128, 160 because when I did a rectangle all the way around from 00 to 128, 160, it, you could see it. So, um, it did seem like there was an actual point 128, 160. So some of the commands, uh, a draw line command, this is a point to a point. And you can go um, one point, second point. You can also go backwards, first point, second point. So that could be point one and that could be point two. It seemed to work just fine. The draw rectangle and the fill rectangle and the round rectangle commands 
are a little bit different where they give you a starting point, an X and a Y for a starting point, and then you have a, 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 a relative value for the width and the height. So it doesn't go to the second point. That was a mistake I made originally. So uh, a line is an absolute coordinate. It goes back to my lessons on CNC where you have absolute coordinates and uh, rectangles are relative values from the initial point. So you have a starting point and then how far you want to go. So that was for the rectangle commands. Uh, the circle command is pretty straightforward. It's a center point with a radius and then a color. Same thing with a filled. filled. Uh, the rectangle, these are all, uh, to do the triangle, these are all absolute points. So you just tell it the three points of the triangle, one, two, and three x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Um, and then to do text on it, move your cursor someplace onto the screen. So I'm going to move my cursor here, and then the text gets filled in. And uh, it, it won't overwrite the text. So if you are trying to, I'm doing data that's changing. And so you put in your text, and then after you put in your text, you have to put in a color that's the same as your box, as your background color. So I had a black background, so I'd make a black rectangle, then I put my text. Otherwise, it just goes text on top of text on top of text, and you get a big mess. So that worked out uh, well to do, to do some of that. So I do have uh, a couple of, I have this program. Um, I have a link to the program. I'll put that link in the description of this little video. Um, it just does one of everything. Um, it's not fancy. It's not commented out very well, but you might find it useful. So hope that helps. Hope uh, you have a lot of fun and do some cool projects with this little TFD display and an ESP32.